Alright, welcome back everyone. I wasn't really sure how to go about this video. Um, there's a lot to cover here, and there's a lot of attributes to it, but I wanted to talk about what appears to be an identity crisis in the West. And somebody said to me, well, who are you without identity? I'm not talking about individual identity that's what i want people to move forward to is individual identity and how one defines themselves i think i might have many videos about what well, many like m i n i videos about particular subject matters can pertaining to this but there seems to be an identity crisis. And it actually falls in line with some of Friedrich Nietzsche's philosophy. That what are we to do in a society without God? Without God, we are religion. We tend to turn to other things or believe in very radical ideas like fascism and communism. Dogmatic atheism essentially could lead to communism. Um, dogmatic patriotism, you know, like ethno-nationalism, that can be dangerous. Uh, herd mentality, uh, kind of tribalistic mentality, which is almost unavoidable, we're social animals, we're pack animals, we... We tend to do that. But I, I, I see this... Um, so, um, well, I mean, Friedrich Nietzsche saw that as a, a possibility for a problem in a world without religion is that we would turn to these sort of dogmatic principles and that we, we could fall into the abyss or the void and turn to things like nihilism. And I have to admit, nihilism is not something that everyone can handle. You have to have a very strong mind to try and get a grasp around true nihilism, that nothing has any meaning. Because then it turns into you really, really have to strive to find meaning yourself. So it's, it's in the everyday mundane tasks that you do that you, you might ultimately find meaning. And uh, one of the ways Friedrich Nietzsche talks about doing this is kind of nihilistic in and of itself is instead of running or trying to hide from the things that, are, that cause us pain, but to do things that embrace pain because nothing that is great comes without sacrifice or come, nothing that is great comes without a great deal of pain. And he had his philosophical story of climbing the mountain, which is a lot of physical exertion for somebody with syphilis or with a lot of, you know, health problems. It's very, very difficult to do, but it was worth it. It, it was worth that pain because once he got to the top of the mountain, it was the view that made it worth it. He got to see over the village that he lived in and just absolutely gorgeous view, wonderful view. So he had to endure that pain of climbing the mountain and ultimately the reward was the view. There's a psychological trick where they, they do this as well as instead of instant gratification, what you try to do is you try to tap into the reward system by doing something that you take great pride in and something that you're not going to get instant gratification for, but once you complete said task, um, there's this sort of, you know, like 
I did this. I a sense of accomplishment. I suppose is, is what I'm. I'm the the phrase that I'm looking for. But I've I've seen it. Like I saw somebody say, "You have to defend your heritage." There seems to be a lo- an awful lot of obsession with heritage, and it's not just from the white community, by the way. It's from the black community too, which puts some of the arguments in in my ball game in my in my field to the test because well some of the alt right people I've talked to have said well the black people they they're never going to see us as equal that makes their argument right and it's like well that's that's one hell of a, a thing to tackle cuz here's the problem and um so if if we're all like concerned about our identity and we're thinking about our our inheritance, here, here's my problem with inheritance is that I like my great 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 let, let's say like a relative that existed three hundred years ago. The only relevance that that person has to me is that at some point in time they did something that is a result of me being here today. The only way that I could know anything about them, and see, this is sort of dogmatic itself, you know, but the only, the only way I could know them is through the biased lenses, uh, the lens of biases of other people that knew them that wrote about them, or the, the subject to their own lens of biases of themselves and learn about them that way. But I would never truly be able to form my own individual opinion of them because they're dead. So I have no way of truly knowing who that person was through my own eyes. I suppose it's fascinating to an extent, but do I identify with Germanic traditions? Not really. Do I identify with European traditions? Not really. Um, I, I mean, I, I subscribe to a Gothic culture and, and that's the thing is I, I think a lot of the times what, what it gets obscured here when we talk about heritage, like I, I was talking to a black individual not too long ago where I said, do you think we'll ever reach a day and age where we will no longer see each other as race, that we will just see each other as people? And they said, no, I don't want that. I want to identify as black. Heritage is important. Well, I, that's the same argument I've heard from people on the alt-right about white. And here, here's the, the real issue, and it creates a bind because there are proponents on the left that make this difficult for a leftist like myself, is that here, here's the real reality of it. I'm sort of a person that looks at human beings as one species, not in a communistic type way, not of a collectivist type way of we're all the same, we all think alike. No, I'm not talking about homogeny or hegemony. I'm talking about how we are literally, biologically speaking, one species, and that a lot of the things that these people are talking about don't really so much have to do with your race. They have more to do with culture. So you're not so much identifying with a race as you are identifying with a culture. Like I identify with goth. Things that are dark, gloomy, depressing, death aesthetic, nihilism, uh, so we're, we're talking about a culture at that point. And in the past, that is what created tribalism as groups of people with similar ideas, cultural backgrounds, that kind of thing. Now we have these societies, we, we invented secularist philosophy, which was a great idea. Under We, we have many, many, many different cultures living under one umbrella. In, in the states or the countries that we have today. That's thanks to secularist philosophy. That's thanks to the Greeks. Because as 
we go back in bef- post civilization just had these tiny little tribes and one tribe would conquer another they'd exchange things back and forth they'd fuck the women and reproduce and such like that and another tribe would come along and do the same thing until you ultimately ended up with a tribe that was extremely powerful and that's when we start seeing the formation of tiny civilizations the beginning of civilization Okay, this is a lot how um, microbial life works, by the way, and how cellular production works, too. Like, when when single-celled organisms started clumping together, this is kind of how it works. Is the same way these civilizations have formed. They started off as tiny little tribes, and the strong ones started to... Um, engulf the less strong ones and they became one and eventually it's just started collecting until you you ended up with something like the egyptian empire but the greeks they started noticing like hey we're taking over indo-european tribes and they have these cultures and they can live under our umbrella with secularist philosophy, they can keep tenets of their culture that way, but they have to follow these rules. So that's the amazing thing about secular philosophy is that we allow for maximum amount of freedom and only restrict it based on negative consequence and causality. Matt Dillahunty does a really good job at explaining... Um, what did he call it? Humanist secularist society, I think is what he called it. And it's a good idea. It's a good philosophy. Being dogmatic about it would be horrifying. That's where you would get into something like communism. But here's, here's a biological fact. The human species is one species. Uh, The color of your skin is nothing more than an an aesthetic description. I have white skin. I have black hair. I have, you can't see it. You can hardly ever see it in the camera because it doesn't capture it. My eyes have faded as I've gotten older too, but I actually have hazel eyes. They're green. They actually got little flakes of gold in them. But these are descriptive features. Technically, biologically speaking, we have the lowest genetic diversity than any other animal. Not even technically, it's just pure fact. The human species has the lowest genetic diversity than any other animal in the entire animal kingdom. And interracially coupling is and breeding is actually good for the human race so i'm coming at this from a biological perspective a scientific perspective i'm not saying like the 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 communists sweeping in saying yeah we're all one species we need to all be united under one umbrella and introduce hegemony and homogeny no 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 fuck that No, I'm not trying to take away individuality here. I'm not saying that different cultures shouldn't exist. I'm saying they can exist under one platoon, which is what you call liberal and democratic political structures, which allow for that to happen. But in the absence of religion and God, people have returned to ridiculous. Like, you know, one of the concerns that was brought up in Nietzsche's time was that people would believe in anything. Well, you have people believing in genders that don't exist. Okay, so that's happened. Uh, You have deep dogmatic nationalism. You know, it's like your country could be wrong or right, you'd still support them, even if they're completely in the wrong. 
which is like it's good to question your government because they might be doing something horrific. You have things like people turning to really bad ideas like fascism and communism. Those are really bad ideas. Why are we turning to those? And it, it gets really complex because you have proponents of the left that start coming out saying, well, if you're white and you adopt something from an Asian culture or a black culture, then you're culturally appropriating. And it couldn't just be that you identify with that culture more than you do with something that is white. And that's a problem. Because we're not seeing things as just being human at that point. It's this continuation of us and them. It's otherizing. It's the tale of the Sneetches. And, and so then you have like basically two different leftist philosophies that are basically like one is saying yes one species and bringing in a really horrible sort of dogmatic idea and then you have one saying yes one species but not negating culture you have the freedom to belong to whatever culture you want I don't agree with the communist of hegemony of uniting everybody under one culture because it's sort of conflating culture with religion. But when you treat, when you have a dogmatic view to towards culture, it starts turning into sort of religious fundamentalism. And you end up with things like national socialism and racism. And I think what it is is that in this day and age, people are struggling with identity. Like, who am I? And I think who you are, it's, it's like there, there's a lot that could go into that. And I have, my, I have my own like sort of philosophical practices that I could tell you on how to identify yourself. But... An ancestor of yours that lived over 300 years ago has nothing to do with who you are today. Your immediate family is important, and even then you could have staunch disagreements with your immediate family. You would be staunchly against like what your father and mother believe, but still deeply care for them because they're, well, they're your mother and your father, or you could absolutely hate them because they're monsters. <clears throat> both things exist but an ancestor of yours that lived 300 years ago lived in a time that's completely antithetical to the time that we live in today and completely irrelevant to who you are <clears throat> 300 years ago you're, you're talking about somebody who lived in a time of very puritanical ideas and if if you believed in multiple gods you could be crushed by rocks and burned at the stake i mean what do you think you have in common with them exactly that you are a color that you are a race what exactly Instead, I think it's more important to focus on who you are as an individual, what you like, what you identify as. Friedrich Nietzsche actually explored some of these things. I find it interesting because this is one of his concerns. In a world without religious belief, people would turn to some very, very dangerous things. And in fact, one person that took his idea of the Ubermensch did just that. Friedrich Nietzsche was against nationalism because to him it was nothing more than a way of trying to fill the void, cope with the pain instead of dealing with the pain. Friedrich Nietzsche was against hedonism. He was, any form of hedonism was basically a way of 
trying to run from your problems, trying to, instead of enduring the pain, to seek enlightenment or to... Basically, you, you, you can't understand the beauty of life until you understand the imperfections of it, until you understand pain. You will not understand the beauty. He, he was against... He, he perceived religion and alcohol is exactly the same thing. It was a way to try to make yourself feel better. You're not good enough. Well, according to God, you are. You're not good enough. Oh, I'll just drown myself in alcohol. Instead of saying, I'm not good enough at this. I want to get better. I have to get better at it. That was his idea of the Ubermensch. And then Hitler took it and twisted it into something foul and, and disgusting. And he felt the same, Nietzsche felt the same way about nationalism. He felt that it was poisonous, that it was poisoning people's minds. And I agree with him. I think Friedrich Nietzsche was a great philosopher. I like his philosophy. And in a way, I kind of want to help aid people. And continue on that philosophy and sort of add on to it. Because when I see people say things like, defend your heritage. And it's not just coming from, like like I said, you have proponents of the left that are making things difficult for me. Because colonialism, cultural appropriation, it's like, well, we're all one species. And then the communists sweep in and say, yes, we are. Hegemony. No. Not hegemony, we're individuals. We we have different likes, tastes, and preferences. So, so sweep that aside. Sweep the, the people who are talking about cultural appropriation, colonialism, blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, one species. From a biological aspect, we have to get beyond this. We, we, we have to escape this infantile view of human beings being different based on skin color. We can be different based on culture. That's true. I'm different. I'm odd because I subscribe to the gothic counterculture or subculture, whichever way you want to look at it. I see it as a counterculture. Goth is ultimately anti-uniformity, anti-conformity, anti-establishment. It's based off of punk. It's the sister of punk. Goth is essentially sort of kind of inherently anti-fascist. Are there probably fascist goths out there? Probably. Not very popular in the goth community, I imagine, because uh, it is anti-uniformity and anti-conformity and anti-establishment. I would say that... <clears throat> People, there's a lot of people that have not that have had an issue with finding or exploring their individual identity, and that's going to come from analyzing yourself. And like I said, it, the the right has posed a an argument that makes this difficult as well because they have the alt right has told me. You know, the other races, they, they, they don't see you the same. They're not going to see you as equal. Well, when you have a community of black people saying, no, I don't think we'll ever see beyond race. I, I want to be seen as black. I'm proud to be black. And um, I say, well, I, I just think that, you know, people should be seen as human. And we're we're not looking at like the thing that they're identifying with is not really so much a race it's dominated by a race but it's a culture and there's a difference a line to be had there and i i like recently i i saw this with this uh here in the United States, we had the Super Bowl, which is not something I'm a big fan of, but it plays a big role into that whole tribal 
mentality of wanting to be under one banner and fit in. This is human nature to want to do that. But to be to 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 make yourself malleable to fit under that banner when it doesn't describe who you are is going against your own nature. And like I said, it's 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 absolutely impeccable how much Friedrich Nietzsche saw in what was to come in society that is coming fruition and he tried to come up with philosophies to help people live in a world without religion, without turning to, you know, dogmatic patriotism, dogmatic nationalism, dogmatic atheism. He, he did have issues with some of the atheists for this reason because they fell into the, the abyss. He himself eventually fell into the abyss trying to think of ways. It drove him to, to madness trying to find a way to find meaning in life. He, in some ways, he looked at it as like, he, he looked at gardening. He, you know, you take a plant out and you see all these ugly roots and everything, but out from these ugly roots springs something beautiful. <clears throat> So, like, we, we all have these, these things to face, and it's, it's important that we are able to find people that we can relate and identify with. I also think it's important to talk to people who come from other cultures, other beliefs, and see what they... And, and, and that's why I bring up the lim liberal and democratic political structures and secularist philosophy, the ability to unite multiple cultures under one umbrella. But when you have people sitting there saying, defend your heritage, and it's coming from not just the white race, not just the black race, those are the two races I predominantly hear it from, but you start hearing other people talking about that, like defending your heritage, it becomes difficult to wade through that and say, I'm not advocating for hegemony. I'm not advocating for a universal national approach. I'm not advocating for a universal cultural approach. I am saying, biologically, we're in trouble. We have the lowest genetic diversity. I've said this before in other videos, and I've said it previously in this video. We need to grow up, and we need to recognize the difference between race and culture. It's important if we want to survive as a species. I've talked about this before, too, in anti-Darwinian society. <sighs> so, these are important issues, and I think... Um, you know, in, in the introduction of Jordan Peterson, I think, is, is a result of that, too. He calls postmodernism the search for identity, ban, you know, banning under one flag or a banner, such as religion or a nation or a culture, making us against them otherizing. These are things that Friedrich Nietzsche saw coming and tried to warn people about and tried to come up with philosophies to try and help people avoid it. Atheists as well. And 
I think skeptics and atheists have been really good about trying to promote a more humanitarian, and I'm not talking about globalization, we can keep our countries and stuff like that. It's, it gets really weird, too, because you could think about it this way. So, we, we you know, for instance, we look at things like uh, people south of the United States border, that... The, the, this is, you know, like the Latino culture. The majority of the people who are coming from south of the border, the Mexican people, are 80% Native American bloodline, if we're going to talk about race. When we talk about Latin, Latino culture, though, that is a white culture based out of Spain. Spain is, as we perceive it, white. We've got a problem here. Because if we're saying race and culture is the same, it's not when it comes to this case. The people in Spain are white. The Spanish culture south of the border is predominantly Native American. They're Native Southern Americans that were dominated by the Spains a long time ago and adopted their language. But a lot of the culture that you see down in South America is a combination of the two. And, and this is what we've seen in tribalism before, and it's like, that's where we see the Greek Empire coming up with secularist philosophy and uniting multiple cultures under one platoon. But then you have people saying that multiculturalism isn't possible, and as long as we keep seeing each other as different, not based, like, not saying, like, I'm a goth, and you're a hippie, therefore we can't get along. That's bullshit. Um, it's, it's more like, well, you're white, and, and I'm this, so therefore we can't get along, and saying that they have different cultures based on that. But it, I guess a better example, is to put it this way, is, like, just because I'm goth, something antithetical to goth would be something of mainstream culture, something pop culture like jocks and preps. Just because I'm goth and I'm anti-fashion, so they, they might be wearing Gucci or Christian Dior, and I'd look at that and I'd be like, ew, gross, make your own clothes. Uh, that doesn't mean that we wouldn't have any commonality. And it's not because we're the same race, we could actually be different races and still find commonality. And I think that's important that we understand is that there are things that are just intrinsically human. We are one race. Or not one race, but we are one species. We're not different breeds. We are one species. We happen to have different skin color, different hair different eye color but that's the same as any species that's why i use the common house cat it's because they have a higher genetic variance but you don't see like discrimination in house cats and part of the reason they have such a high level of genetic variance is for one humans haven't really in like disrupted they, they haven't controlled the breeding of the house cat as much as we have with canines. They still have a lot of their internal instincts intact. They're, they're just basically wild animals that happen to go habitate with us, basically. And the reason why they have such a high genetic variance is they don't have this discriminatory factor to other versions of house cat. They will still mate with each other. They have a different social hierarchical structure than we do. 
they're not as social as we are. <clears throat> we, we are a very interesting animal, because not only are we social, we're also territorial at the same time. So we're almost like, kind of like taking a dog and a cat and combining it into one. We're complex. And I would love to get into finding like some, some things, some philosophical things of finding your personal identity and being okay with that but i just wanted to make this video to say that and and you, you know, like that this is a a problem that i'm struggling with and i would love to hear an exit door to this but it would appear that so far as to say the alt right is correct that the other races other eyes whites and instead of searching for individual identity, they search for, they, they find collectivist identity just as much as whites do. And I'd like to say that that's not the case. Or I'd like to find the people who are black or are other ethnic ethnicities that are like-minded in that they don't subscribe themselves to an ethnic collectivism and look for self-identity as well. Because as it stands, it looks like at that point, because this, this person, this black person who said this to me is not racist. They, 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 they don't hate white people. They just say, well, we're different. You're different culturally, but you're not different as in you're still a human being. You're still a homo sapien. Just like me. Human beings have a genetic variance of 0.01%. Meaning that the, the, the black man that I asked that to only have a 0.01% genetic variance to me. And in that 0.01% genetic variance, you will find all the genetic information that makes him different than me, that makes his skin black, his eye color, his hair color. And that's the same as me and another white person that might have blonde hair and blue eyes. It's all in that 0.01%. We have the lowest genetic variance than any other animal in the entire animal kingdom. To increase that variance, it is important that we stop otherizing. Someone called me a monster for saying that uh, interbreeding until we're the same is horrific. That's genocide. It's like, no, that's not genocide. Genocide is where you take in, like, what we did to the Native Americans and, you know, the, the Plains Native Americans, where we eradicated them and to the point where they don't exist. They We, we didn't just breed with them until we became one combined culture and people. It that's That's not what happened. It's a, a little bit different there. <clears throat> People who are biracial, it's it's not the end of the white race or the end of the black race. It's evolving into something else, which evolution is necessary for our survival. Carl Sagan once said that our tenure on this planet, we've accumulated dangerous evolutionary baggage. We've also acquired compassion for others and love for our children and a great soaring passionate intelligence, the cleared tools of our continued survival. 
it would seem that that would really only apply to a very small percentage of people. And the percentage, the small percentage of people that see it, it's like we're walking against the wind. I'd love to hear your comments on this in the comment section below. I'll make videos outlining some of the details of this. I'm not going to fit it all into this video. There's probably be like, I don't know, like a documentary. But I do want to kind of explore as to some of the identity crises that people go through. And some questions we can ask ourselves to find out who we are and other things like that. So, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell button on any channel you're subscribed to. And try to follow this philosophy. Support the belief in choices, not one's ability to impose one's will on others against their own will.